I got to I I just have to congratulate you and applaud you for that debate with Nancy Grace. <laughs> that was amazing to watch. Tell them your analogy with the uh, Yeah, the it was movie. like watching Bilbo <laughs> go into the cave with Smaug. That's what it felt like. <sighs> she is really man, it it really is don't don't you think she's sort of a uh, don't you think this is there is the, a potential in this that it could like fly in her face in a way yeah. maybe she doesn't expect? Yes, because because this is a this is an, a, a topic that people have very strong feelings about, and I know she thinks she's kind of just doing television. I mean, Nancy's actually a very sweet person. She was a prosecutor, as she'll remind you a million times, and I'm sure as a prosecutor she probably ground people down in a way without sort of listening to their arguments the way she does now. Yes. She doesn't listen; she just sort of grinds. Yes, and, and I'm, that's probably what she did. Did and then she amplifies all that for television. So it seems like what's the name of the, the dragon? Smau. <laughs> Smau. So it seems like Smau, but but she is actually a delightful, sweet person, and I'm actually fearful that the, taking such a strong position that's kind of irrational and moralizing is so disconnected from from the American public that the, you could get a big backlash. It, yeah. it, it feels like that, and and I and I think it's I, and you know I used to just. I used to. She's like a professional wrestler that people like to not like. That's right. And and I get that. And I think that's it. when it comes to her sort of staunch attacks on child killers and yeah. all of that stuff. It's cool. Whatever. You know. It's fun to watch. I really enjoy her. I really do enjoy her show. This position that she's taking, it stops being cute because the position that she's taking is one where that sends a lot of people to jail. Right. Not and, not only that, and, and impinges deeply on personal liberties for no good reason by supporting an irrational weird law that we've had in place that I point out for you since 1937 when everyone the somebody in the government looked around and went, "We got some bad people doing this bad drug." Well, who were those bad people? Well, they happen to be people with darker skin than the white folk. Yeah. And then they made that all illegal and guess who we still send to jail? Black. Same black and brown people. That's, That's who goes to jail for pot. And that, that just from a social standpoint, can't we all agree? I may, okay, you don't like pot, fine, fine. From a social standpoint, can't we agree to do something about this? Yeah, that's right. And that's why you getting into the fray with people like Nancy Grace is so important. And for you, it's a little risky. This is not a it's, risk-free it's, right, position it's not for risk you. At all. Well, first of all, people don't understand my point of view. They don't. They think somehow I'm anti-pot or anti-legalization. Right. I'm not actually pro either. I, I'm I'm pro human liberty. I'm pro the American system. I'm pro letting the people determine their laws. I, I don't think this is. If I had to have a you know somebody press press my face in the mirror and said, "Is it going to be good or bad?" I think it might end up being kind of not so good for people. But so I'll deal with it. I'll, my, my profession will deal with it. That's okay. I just maybe it will end up being good. I don't know. I just tweeted a. Um, there's a, a great. Uh, there's a, somebody I, I, I like a lot. It used to be a CNN reporter. Names Amber Lyon. She started a website called ResetMe.org, which is a pro psychedelic website. And she just tweeted a study that came out showing that uh, ODs on narcotics in denver are down are down i know i saw that too and i thought oh this this could be the answer yeah this could be the answer to the opiate epidemic and the chronic pain thing i would much rather see people on a lot of pot than any of the pills that they're taking out because the pill combo that they get on the the opiate and the benzodiazepine and the sleeping medicine a kills absolutely when patients die of drug use that's how they die today b Perpetuates their pain and they're and they're they're uh, they're they're disabled by it. Yeah. They're disabled by they're just, they're helpless. Pot, it, yeah. Some people are on the couch, so they smoke a lot of pot, but some people work just fine. Well, one f facet of marijuana that doesn't exist in the opiates is that if you overdose on marijuana, you uh, your you don't mind, die. You, you don't, don't die, die, but you are dragged through your own personal neurosis, inner weaknesses. Oh, fears. If, if you over yeah, if you have a quote overdose, they, people yeah. say I feel paranoid, yeah. and usually what they mean is the marijuana is showing all the these parts of myself that I don't necessarily want to deal with right now. And that can create a lot of positive change for people.